I think uh, my biggest worry was just being a failure. Um, you know, I was playing AFL footy and uh, probably seen as, you know, being a, a strong and, and happy guy, yet, you know, underneath I wasn't. I was, you know, the exact opposite, you know, and uh, I didn't want people to, to know that I was struggling and I, I thought it was a weakness in me and I, I definitely didn't want anyone to think that I had a, you know, some sort of soft underbelly or there was uh, something... Uh, something wrong with me, you know, because I really felt that I, you know, I was deep down. I felt that I was sick, and I and I knew that I had a problem, but I just didn't want to admit it. I was fine when I had things to do, if I was out training, and you know, I could keep my mind busy. But when I was in uh, probably a, a quieter periods, and you know, my own time is is when I really struggled with the the depression. You know, I really just hated looking at myself in the mirror, and I really didn't want to uh, come to training. I uh, didn't really enjoy being around people. I didn't sleep, basically, you know, for days on ends, just where my mind would be running at a million miles an hour about all sorts of crazy things. Um, and I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to stop it. I, I was getting to the stage where I was, I was getting a bit, um, I, su I suppose you could say a little bit uh, suicidal. I physically, I couldn't go on playing senior football. I. I was struggling to get out on the training track. Uh, I was continually vomiting and um, basically, I think mentally I was shutting down and, and physically I just I couldn't uh, keep up with the demands of AFL footy. It felt like I was having a nervous breakdown basically and you know, I'd be uh, crying before training sessions, crying before games in the corner, just you know, trying to hide it from my teammates but uh, I was just so drained of energy, I, I, I couldn't give 100 percent and that was making me feel even worse. I'd pushed myself to my absolute limit mentally and physically just to stay in the business for that long because I'd been doing it for about probably seven or eight years and, and you know dealing with the depression on the side and it, it had just got the better of me. As a final um, effort at saving sort of myself and probably my football career and you know getting back on track we decided to go and see a psychiatrist and just see if there was um, anything uh, wrong or something they could help, maybe some medication. I went and uh, spoke to him about my problems I'd been dealing with and um, he diagnosed me just with um, yeah serious uh, depression. With the medication I'm on, I started on um, one type which didn't work for me, so then I tried another and since I've been on that second type, I basically don't know that I'm on it. Thompson now, can he swing onto the left? I've changed probably my approach towards footy. I base all my football now around how hard I work on the ground and, and basically things that I can control. Um, every week you're going to be playing on a, you know, a, a great opponent, so you're not going to play well every week. But as long as I go out there thinking that I'm working hard and that I'm giving my all, then that's all that I care about. And I can control that every week. So I don't. So basically, every week I succeed, uh, whether I play um, a great game as far as kicks and marks go or not. So it's it's been a, it's such a small thing, but it's taken a hell of a lot of pressure off of me um, to perform. And what I've found is my performances have gone up anyway. Thompson three third. He's on fire. Thompson one out. This to equal his career best. Seven goals for the former Hawk. When I have a problem or when I get a bad article written about me now, I face up to it. Um, like with bad articles, I put them on the mirror at home and so that I'm looking at it every day and basically saying, you know what, that doesn't affect me. It's the same thing with playing the game. Uh, you just, uh, you've got to confront it. So my whole philosophy now is around is just the quicker I face up to it, um, the same as uh, speaking to the public about my problem um, with the depression, the quicker you can get it off your chest and, uh, and get on with life. One thing I basically say to people, uh, whoever I talk to, uh, whatever age is, if you think you've got even the smallest of problem, put your hand up and ask for some help and find out if there is something wrong. You'll never know until you put up your hand and, uh, and ask for that help and, and, and as far as you know, people talking about, you know, I don't want to go on a medication. For me, it's just absolutely crazy talk um, to not want to get yourself help 
um, for an illness that you're suffering. I mean, if you had a headache, you'd take a Panadol. If, uh, you know, you, <laughs> if you've got a runny nose, you'd take a Sudafed. But if, you're, uh, if you've got depression or you're, you're really struggling, you don't want to take medication um, just because there's a stigma attached to it. It's, it's, it's just rubbish. I mean, I'm still on medication, take medication every single day. And, uh, you know, I just, I try to say to people, you know, you do what you have to do to, to get well. And if that means taking medication, well, you know, you're silly not to uh, put your hand up and ask for that help.